Welcome to Devil's Advocate, the unbiased news source. On this channel, I debate topical issues and highlight key facts, statistics, and opinions from both sides of the argument. Instead of imposing my own view on the topic, I allow you, the viewer, to reach your own conclusion. So what is up for discussion this week? It's the latest policy from the Conservative Party's manifesto regarding the removal of free school lunches for children aged 5 to 7. Now, there has been a strong reaction to the policy, which has sparked misinformation and some very colourful opinions. So let's start off with a brief summary of how primary schools currently operate in England. Since September 2014, every child in reception from age 5 to 7 in a state-funded school receives a hot, nutritious lunchtime meal, regardless of their parents' income. This has resulted in 1.6 million children receiving a free lunch. This is equivalent to 86% of all infant school children. So what are the changes that the Conservatives are imposing? Let's look directly at the lines from the manifesto. We do not believe that giving school lunches to all children free of charge for the first three years of primary school, regardless of the income of their parents, is a sensible use of public money. There is now good evidence that school breakfasts are at least as effective in helping children to make progress in school. So under a new Conservative government, schools in England will offer a free school breakfast to every child in every year of primary school, while children from low-income families will continue to receive free school lunches throughout their years in primary and secondary education. The savings made from this change will be added to the core school's budget, meaning that every penny saved will go towards children's education. So let's kick off the debate with the manifesto. I first want to highlight who still receives free school lunches, as this policy has been slightly misinterpreted by some media outlets. It's not taking the lunches away entirely. It actually states that for low-income families, they will still receive them. But what is a low-income family in the United Kingdom? Well, low-income is defined as 60% of the median household income. In 2016, the median household income in the UK stood at £26,400. So low-income earners are classed as anybody earning under £15,840. Now, the manifesto does not state this as being the exact figure that determines free school lunch eligibility. It's just a back-of-the-envelope calculation that I've produced. It is, however, an excellent starting point for an argument. Do you think £16,000 a year household income is enough to provide a child with a nutritious lunch. I will also add the caveats that it roughly costs £400 a year to provide lunch for your child. The next talking point that I want to address, does a free school meal actually improve how well a child does in school? In the Conservative Manifesto, it claims there is now good evidence that school breakfasts are at least as effective in helping children to make progress in school. However, they've been slightly naughty here and not cited a source. I managed to actually find the report that they were claiming from. It's from the Institute of Fiscal Studies and titled Magic Breakfast. Links in the description. The study did find evidence that pupils in year two and six gained two months additional progress in writing and English than pupils not taking part in the scheme. However, there is some caution with this study. The first being that it may not be the nutritional breakfast actually affecting the attainment scores, but the social aspect of the breakfast club. The second point was that the scheme was rolled out in fairly disadvantaged primary schools, which means that it may not improve attainment for all children across the country. It's also important for the sake of argument to cite research that supports school lunches. Now, this is the report that the Labour and Liberal Democrat Party both refer to, and it's a 2013 report from the Institute of Fiscal Studies. This also shows very similar attainment scores compared to the fiscal study report in 2016, showing that when children received a free lunch, they gained an extra two months of attainment than pupils that weren't taking part. This report also carries the same caveat that it was rolled out in disadvantaged schools. And it's also very difficult to pinpoint if this was the exact cause of the increase in attainment scores, as there are lots of other policies introduced at the same time. So I think one topic that's actually being overshadowed by this debate between breakfast and lunch is actually the health of the children of the nation. Some quick statistics. A fifth of children aged five are classed as overweight or obese, and a third of children aged seven are also classed as obese or overweight. Since the introduction of school lunches in 2014, 
the rate of obesity has actually increased. Now, I'm not instigating that free school lunches has increased obesity. You could argue that free school lunches has helped curb obesity, or it's had no effect at all. I think it's important when we discuss this issue that there's not one solution to everything. There are some other factors that come into play with childhood obesity. There is evidence that the poorer you are, the higher the chance of you becoming obese. If a parent is obese, you have a statistically higher chance of becoming obese yourself. It may seem like I'm stating the obvious, but low levels of physical exercise lead to childhood obesity. So it's also worth noting when the debate about these two factors of lunch or breakfast come into play, that attainment isn't the only thing that's focused on. Obesity in children should also be a prime target. So in summary, the proposed policy of the Conservatives aims to reduce cost and provide the same levels of attainment in primary schools by replacing free lunches with breakfast for all five to seven year olds in state education. And they still plan to keep free lunches for children of low income families, which is less than 16,000 pounds. The manifesto does not state that it will tackle the obesity problem in the UK. Thank you for watching this week's video of Devil's Advocate. I hope I've been as unbiased as possible and I would appreciate if you could leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you and good night.